Whoa, that was a good nap. Well, hey, since I'm here, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, how about I do a review on this uh, Thunder Laser Nova 51 130-watt CO2 laser? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's get to it. So when the machine showed up this last year, uh, it was a little bit of an exercise getting it off the truck because it was a small lift gate. But we got it off, had a couple friends come over, help me move it and get it unpacked, um, all the accessories out of there, and uh, into the back room there. Barely fit through that little pass-through I had. And uh, at the time I had lumber storage back there, so it was, it was a little bit of a squeeze. I wonder how strong this is. I wonder if I can climb in there. Let's, let's, let's not do. find out until you actually do something. Come on, big boy. <laughs> so we finished getting everything unpacked, got the chiller out, the blower, the air pump, everything, and figured out, you know, I was just gonna use the window for temporary exhaust. And eventually I moved all the lumber out of there and did a wired up its dedicated 110 outlet and got everything going. All right, got some of the horseplay out of the way. So welcome back. Uh, as I said, previously said while I was goofing off, uh, I'm gonna do a review of this uh, Thunder Laser Nova uh, 51 um, 130 watt CO2 laser. Um, just real quick, I'm gonna go over some of the key features and stuff and the reason why eventually, I'll get to the reason why I went with this machine versus some of the competitors. But just real quick overview. It's a Nova 51 because 51 inches because its capacity is 51.2 inches across. Uh, so that's wide enough for the width of a, a sheet of plywood, uh, full sheet with the passers to fit through there. But its capacity on the actual bed itself, 51.2 inches by I think it's 35.4 inches. Let me check. Yep. Um, and as far as the bed, the height, uh, height adjustable bed goes, you can do up to 9.1 inches in height. Um, now with the pass through on the front here, this can be dropped down. You can fit up to 0.8 inch thick sheet materials through there. So you could actually do a full sheet of three quarter inch plywood. Um, some of the other features real quick before I get into some of the other details and some of the optional stuff that I went with and some of the cool features and you know the reason why I chose this machine is real quick is the machine itself Internally has a 20, 128 megs of storage. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but a lot of stuff like my computer, which I'll go over, I have set up over here. You can send files over to the machine and run them from them directly from the machine or have stuff that you do repeatedly saved on the machine, or you can run it directly from your computer via the Lightburn software, uh, which is another thing also because it, all of their machines actually come with uh, light Lightburn. It's not in, incredibly expensive anyways. I actually got another subscription anyways, because I have not only this machine, this computer, I have my laptop that I can use because I originally started with my laptop on this machine. Plus I like to do, sit on the couch and design stuff on there. And I also have my PC in the house that I use that I sit at uh, most of the time to do files and stuff and then bring them out here. Uh, real quick, so their machines, they come with air pump, uh, which is for the air assist, we'll go over that, which is required. Um, exhaust fan for your exhaust because you need exhaust and a chiller. Now the chiller may vary depending on the wattage of the machine. So for their 100 watt machines, it comes with a CW500 chiller. 500, is it a? 5,000. The 130 watt tube machines, like this one comes with a CW5200. So just a higher capacity machine for heat dissipation. Um, some of the other stuff real quick is their machines, once, once you get it delivered, set up all that stuff, they do do a one hour virtual training session with you where they remote into your computer, all that stuff. You're on the phone talking through, getting the machine set up. If you haven't done so already, you have no experience. I never had a laser before this. I've operated CNC routers before. Um, so I was familiar with that kind of aspect of it. A little bit different, but it's very user friendly. They've gotten pretty easy as far as the light burn software goes and understanding how it communicates with the machines. Now, capabilities wise, so these machines, the, one of the number one reasons amongst many things I, I went with this company is for its price point, their machines use hybrid um, stepper servos. So kind of like a happy medium between because they're pretty much in the CNC world or laser world, all the high-end stuff is gonna use servos. Now, hybrids are kind of that halfway in between. So you could get faster travel speeds, all that stuff. So this machine itself with the included two inch uh, lens that it comes with uh, can do up to 500 dots per inch at 1000 millimeters a second travel speed. Um, with the actual op optional, 
let's see, I think I got it sitting over here. The optional high resolution uh, lens can do conflicting information. Some sources say up to 800 dots per inch. Uh, some say up to a thousand. So I've never had to go up to a thousand. I've done seven or 800 before and it's, you know, I, I can't see any resolution difference beyond that myself, but I'm a novice. And they also offer a four inch head also. Now, mind you, the machines come with the two inch uh, lens heads. The high resolution and the four inch one are optional. Four inch is better for deep cutting, whereas the two inch is better for like all around engraving and uh, shallow to medium depth cutting. Whereas uh, the HR head is engraving only. Uh, so the travel speeds on this, um, I've had this machine, we got it moved in here. Yeah. About nine months ago, actually only up and running for six or seven months now. Um, I have yet, and I've done so many projects. It's not even funny. I've yet to see the machine miss a step, miss anything, or have any errors while, while actually running a job up to a thousand millimeters a second. Obviously not that fast when doing some really deep cuts, but you know, I've done a lot of, a lot of projects like artwork like this where it's you know anywhere from eight to ten or twelve layers of eighth inch or quarter inch plywood cut and you can tell a lot of cuts and a lot of sheets stacked up but stuff like that i do a lot of cutting like that some engraving a lot of cutting board stuff like that just venturing off into stuff now one of the other accessories i did get also and i have not had a chance to really play with other doing some test stuff is a rotary for this machine which brings me to the the second biggest reason why i went with this machine versus some of the other competitors in its price point is this machine and i i don't want to throw any of the other ones under the bus up there but there's a lot of other machines that require you when you put a rotary in here to disconnect one of your axis uh i'm not sure if it's an x or y and then connect your rotary to that axis and configure stuff in here now these machines and i'll do close-ups of all this stuff has a built-in connection for the rotary and everything so other than dropping the bed setting your rotary device in there getting it squared up you plug and play. It's super easy to swap and stuff. You, you don't have to reconfigure the machine. Um, so feeds and speeds, the dependability of it. I've wa watched, did a lot of research ahead of time as far as this machine compared to some of the other competitors in its price point, because ideally, yes, I would love to go eventually down the road with something like a epilogue or a Trotec or something like that. Something, you know, one of the machines that are considered industry standard. However, I don't really have a need for that right now because it's not the bulk of my business. I'm really more of a tinkerer and I like to do art and stuff like that. Plus I can't right now, you know, this, this machine. So I bought this with all the bells and whistles, every accessory that they possibly offer, all the lenses, the rotary, every possible upgrade. And it was still just under 15,000. I would spend easily three times that on an epilogue or, uh, a Trotec, which I don't have a need for right now. And, and it's not a slant against them. They have high quality machines. I just, for what I use it for, I, I can't, can't afford something at that price point. It just doesn't make sense. So moving on to this stuff. So it was a big thing, the feeds and speeds, the reliability of it, the gantry, some of the, some of the, uh, some of the hardware on the machine was just better quality and the support. So Thunder Laser has US, US based tech support for all their stuff, sales and tech support. So I only ever had to call them for tech support once and it turned out not to be their fault. It was actually my laptop I was using that was seven years old, had a bad USB port because I was connected to the machine via USB rather than ethernet. I didn't have that set up at the time. I didn't have my permanent PC in here running the machine. But by the time I figured out it was the USB port on my computer, Brian, uh, I believe his name's Brian, them, they had already walked me through a bunch of, you know, checking a bunch of the, the hardware stuff on the machine just to make sure there were no issues there. And easy day, it was my fault. I didn't, you know, it was my computer, not the machine itself. So no problem there, but super responsive. So let's do a walk around real quick. Well, I'll talk about some of the other things on there. Maybe let's do a couple quick cuts, maybe a couple engraving stuff. I've already done a couple videos on my channel. You want to see some of those layered art projects, got those on there, whatnot, but I'll explain the rest of it and why I bought this machine as we walk around the machine and let's get to it. For my setup right now, I have uh, just a six inch uh, ducting going out the window. I made a little plate for in the window there. I haven't decided if I want a permanent um, install exhaust yet, but you can see back there, I got a, um, I actually replaced the uh, duct, the blower it came with, with an inline one back there. It was a little bit of an upgrade, not much so. 
But back there you see the uh, CW5200 chiller for this 130 watt tube. Plenty, you gotta make sure you got room around it for exhaust. Air conditioned space, so no worries there. For the air assist, so there's a high and low. High is used for cutting, low for engraving. High, I replaced the air pump it came with. I actually plumbed in my laser with my shop air because I go up to about 40 PSI for uh, cutting. It works a lot better than the, uh, the stock uh, air assist pump. Now this machine, so the door here I'm about to open is for where the crumb trays are. There's two of them here that are on rollers. And you can see right here, I need to clean this out. One of my biggest complaints about this machine is in the back there, you see one exhaust vent. Uh, there's only one six inch duct exiting the rear of the machine. I feel like a machine this size should really have two left and right um, just to help out with airflow. You get a lot of kind of swirling in the machine on deep cuts with a lot of air. Um, it just, it's, it really needs to. So the user interface on the machine is just like most lasers you would expect. It's, it's pretty simple to use. It's, it's not, not cumbersome and you don't really get lost. Most of the stuff you won't even use, but if you do, it's there. So this machine does have a light burn camera on it up there on the, I don't know if you saw on the lid right there. So in light burn, I can use the camera. However, I've had some issues when calibrating mine. So I only use it for rough, rough estimates. I don't use it for precise positioning. Uh, really satisfied with the electronics on this machine. Everything was professionally wired and labeled. Uh, everything is super easy to find, super clean wire wiring job on this machine. And uh, I think we're gonna move around to the back here. Uh, open up the tube compartment, but you can see there's the uh, AC Infinity um, six inch inline blower fan back there for the exhaust. And it does have outputs on the machine for the blower and the air pump. However, I'm not using the air pump now since I'm using shop air. So the tube on this machine, 30, 130 watt, is pretty long. It runs almost a full width of the machine. Very clean back here. It's easy to get into, easy to clean, easy to keep clean. And down on the far end, that's where actually the beam combiner for the laser pointer and the laser itself, the first mirror and all the first adjustments are at for actually aligning the beam. And I didn't have to do any of that. It came pretty aligned. So there's a rotary install on the inside. Um, now you see one switch that one little sensor there. There's another one on the other side. That's for the, um, the uh, auto zero on this machine. It works okay, but on warp materials, I tend to not use it because it'll give you a false zero. I usually manually zero the Z axis. And the overall build of everything else on this is, uh, I would say a little bit more beefy than some of the competitors, and which was a reason why I went with this, this uh, particular laser also, but you can see the wires going up there for the uh, camera. All right, so I hope that uh, answers any questions as far as why I went with this machine, what its capabilities are, and, uh, kind of what it is for what it is for that price point. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna do a couple sign projects real quick for a customer and I'll get some video of cutting the letters for that and putting those together, include. But if I don't see you at the end of this, I'll see you next time. If you like it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. If you aren't already subscribed, hit, click the notification bell uh, and I'll see you again real soon. So for this uh, little sign project I'm doing right here for a, a couple families actually, this is uh, this wood is nothing special. I think it's just over eighth inch thick, and I'm actually cutting it kind of slow on the machine because it's no, notorious for having big blue seams in it that don't like to cut. But uh, other than that, um, usually I can run pretty fast with this machine. Although I don't go full power usually, just because uh, get a little burning when you don't don't really need to, and there's no sense in pushing a machine that hard and like really wearing out the tube when you don't need to. Another uh, thing that I learned is I always save the, the used large um, boxes, especially like UPS or uh, USPS ones, uh, flat rate ones. Save all the old ones and you can laser your overall template out of it real quick. Cuts like butter. And then you just uh, tape that onto your round and you've got an easy template for gluing. Everything goes on nice and smooth. Might get a little bit of sticking, but it's easy to, to clean up afterwards. and. And then you've got a pretty uh, professional looking product for uh, on the super duper cheap. And I mask everything. So I pull it off, pull off the masking, do a little touch up if any, if any paint chipped or anything like that, any burn marks, and then done.